The small clip playing in the background here is all there is to this video. And I'm going to show you how this is absolutely breaking the laws of physics. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Without With This Me. For some time, I've wanted to go and test some of the physics in Elite, see how well it modeled, how well it fits, uh, what it should. And today I want to take a dive into gravity. And, and the idea I had is I want to try to test if the fall times of a SRV, or any object for that matter, is actually correct compared to what it should be in real life. So before we go and, uh, and do our measurements and do all our testing, um, we should of course try to predict what result we will get so that we do not get biased when we go out and do our experiments. So first of all, we need to get the physics. Now, if we take a look at a graph like this on the X axis, we have the time on the Y axis, we have the, um, the velocity, and this is to simulate a free fall. So if we look at how the velocity changes over time, it increases linearly because we are in a constant, um, constant gravity field. So we have a, uh, a, a constant acceleration. So that gives us a, a light something along like, like this, right? And um, if we were on a high G world, it would be more uh, like this. And if we were on a low G world, it would be more flat like this. But just for good um, measurements, just for the example here, we're going to just put it here at about 45 degrees. Now, the distance that we are going to fall is the area under the curve which I have highlighted here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an SRV, put it on a planet, nice flat area, and I'm going to use the boots to get some altitude. And they're going to keep an eye on the altitude until it reaches the absolute top when it doesn't go any higher. And from there, it's basically a free fall because at, some, at the top, the velocity should be zero. And from there, it will then be a free fall all the way down. So what we're interested in is we need to find a way to calculate how much time does have to pass for the SRV to fall a certain distance. So if we have a distance and we know how strong the gravity is, we should be able to know or to calculate how fast, uh, how long time it will take the SRV to drop. So let's start by having a look at the formula for the curve or the line that we just looked at. So it is that the velocity is equal to the acceleration times the, uh, multiplied by the time. So this is our very simple linear equation for um, how the SRV is, uh, is moving. Now, if we want to calculate the area under, um, under that line, the small triangle here, we could just use the, um, uh, the equation for calculating a triangle. So the height, I mean, the distance we will travel is equal to half our velocity multiplied by the time. Um, so if we have this equation, and we already know the equation for the velocity, we can plug that in, so exchange the v's, and we get that the total height is equal to the acceleration, sorry, half the acceleration multiplied by the time squared. Quite simple. Um, what we've just done is basically just a very simple integral, but we just use the as a triangle because it's a little bit easier. But now that we have this equation, all we have to do is now isolate the t so we can calculate the time. Doing that very simply yields that the square root of 2h over a is the time it will take the, the SLV to fall. Now we just need values for uh, a and h. Now a we can calculate because the planet that I'm using here is the one where DAPSOP is at. And it has a gravity of 0. Uh, 0 0.09 g. Now, the gravity g refers to the gravity of Earth, of course. So in this case, our acceleration will be 0 0.09 multiplied by um, 9.8 meters per second squared, which will give us a total uh, acceleration due to gravity of 0.882 meters per second squared. Now, I do know that gravity on Earth does vary, and we don't know the exact value that Frontier is using, but this is close enough. There is other, there will be other rounding errors here and there, and um, I'll try to point them out as uh, as we come across them. Um, but there is a small, uh, small uncertainty there. There's also an uncertainty in the fact that we do not have a lot of precision on the gravity, so we don't know if the gravity here in this case is actually 0 0.85 or if it's, uh, oh sorry, 0 0.085 or if it's 0. 
0.95, it could be P either. So there's a bit of a leeway there. There's a bit of a of a uncertainty on um, um, on our total acceleration, but as you'll see later, it's it probably doesn't matter. Um, so the next thing we have to do is quite simply to go and um, and play the clip and uh, let's see what kind of maximum altitude we get. Okay, pausing the video here, we are now at the top, we are at the peak. You can see our velocity, our vertical velocity here, it dropped to zero, meaning that we are indeed at the peak. And we got a total height of 36 meters. Now, again, there's a bit of an uncertainty here because we don't, again, don't know if, it's, if it's, this is 36.5 or if it's 35.5, we don't really know, but, um, we get 36, so that's the value we're going to use. So now that we have our height and we have our acceleration due to gravity, we can plug that into the equation from before. And what we get, if we calculate this, is a total drop time of 9.04 seconds. So it should take the SRV just over 9 seconds to get from a um, um, from the top of our small um, uh, flight here and until it hits the ground. So let's uh, let's head back in and uh, let's resume the video and as you can see i put a small clock up here in the corner so you can uh, can follow along with the time as uh, as the slv drops as you can probably see it was pretty far from um i think we ended up at like three and a half seconds and that is obviously quite far from the nine seconds that it should be. So as I, as I said, uh, the, the small rounding errors that we have here and there, sure, it might have meant that the actual drop time might have been 9.1 or maybe it was nine or maybe it was 8.9 or something like that. I, I don't know how much error that could, could sum up to, but my point here being that it wouldn't add a factor of three in terms of errors, which we almost have here. Now, just for fun, I'm just gonna play the video again with the drop time in real time, and then I'm going to play it as it should be if it had followed the proper laws of physics. So there you have it. We can see that the gravity in lead has definitely is definitely not following the laws of physics, as at least not as it should. So the must, Frontier have must have added some kind of extra factor in, maybe to make the game more playable, to have the feel of the planets a little different. I I don't know, um, but at least that is um, that is the the conclusion. And um, before we end, I just want to remind you guys that I have a community Discord server. So if you want to join the community around the channel where we play not only League, but lots of other games, and you can come over there and I'll probably hang out there most evenings. Come by and say hello. There's a link for that in the description. I hope to see you over there. But that's going to be it for this time. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.